Welcome all. I'm joined today by Dr. Armine Lulejian, an assistant professor of Cl clinical public health at USC in California. However, in Armenia, she is here as program director for the Avetis Health Informatics Fellowship with the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. So, Dr. Lulejian, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. So, your team have put together a medical informatics fellowship in Armenia to create a talent pool for people who have expertise in this uh, area. Uh, we'll be discussing the modernization of the healthcare system in Armenia. But before we get into that, I want to get your take with regards to digitization and modernization of a healthcare system. So what role does digi digitization play in modernizing a healthcare system? And also, we will be discussing medical informatics. Can you explain exactly what is medical informatics? Sure. So biomedical and health informatics is an interdisciplinary field that is in the intersection of computer technology, science and medicine. So in essence, it is a field that is transdisciplinary um, and our goal is to solve healthcare systems issues and um, better patient outcomes. Mm -hmm. So Armenia is in a, um, um, in a great place because we can leapfrog other nations. Um, I mean, Ar Armenia, just like any low and middle income country, because all these um, issues or the problems or the trials and errors have been um, done and fixed and potentially like lessons learned can be, can be implemented in places like Armenia. But additionally, Armenia is in a unique place because there's a centralized healthcare system. It's a small enough country that you can actually make change and impact outcomes and be measurable. And also most importantly, Armenia has a talent pool, right? So we can't potentially um, do really great things because of our talent, because of our health system, um, if we position ourselves in a way to make systematic changes. And can you give some examples of how digital technologies can better outcomes in terms of healthcare systems and the delivery of, of healthcare in other settings or places? So a great example, or I, um, I often like to joke that this COVID pandemic has been um, a catalyst for implementation of health technology and showing the world how health informatics can be beneficial to health systems and healthcare outcomes. So in Armenia, just like in many places, we have utilized health informatics to come up with COVID dashboards. So all the numbers that you've seen in Armenia have been because of health informatics because of the digitalization of the systems. But also another example would be the COVID vaccination card, right? That's another great um, implementation of health information technology. You can, have the, uh, you can have patients accessing what we call a patient portal, which is in essence the, the patient's um, electronic health record. That's a, instead of being in paper, it's now in digital form, but also it has a QR code, right? So it's very specific to the patient and it's very specific to the system. In Armenia, there's a you know, green um, uh, indicates that somebody is vaccinated or up to date with vaccination. Red may indicate that, that they're not vaccinated or what have you. So you can have many ways that you can implement or use um, health information technologies and um, health informatics. But um, in terms of one of the ways that, that they've seen um, health informatics be implemented in Armenia is by the COVID dashboard. Mm -hmm. And I assume the COVID-19 pandemic really changed uh, the way healthcare is, is um, provided to, to people in a lot of countries. Did you notice that, that change after the pandemic? Absolutely. So we have seen um, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's not, a, it's not somebody dreaming about it. It's not an, you know, one-off thing that we do in medicine. Telemedicine is here to stay in many ways, right? Um, you can, doctors can do patient follow-up using telemedicine. You can do mental health services using telemedicine, right? Um, and in terms of um, using the technology to come up with dashboards, numbers, follow-ups, right? Um, one of the things that I like that we have in the United States is getting appointment reminders mm -hmm. or scheduling appointments. Like it takes me sometimes 10 to 15 minutes to get somebody on, a, on the line, on a, on a phone, to get an appointment to see my doctor, right? Mm -hmm. I can just email and make my appointment, or I can just go in and like select my appointment online. That's part of using health technology to, 
to better healthcare, right? You're, you're saving time on the patient end, but also you're saving time on the health services end. Nobody needs to be answering the phone to make an appointment for me, right? That can be done. Another way is clinical reminders, right? So clinical reminders can be both for the patient and for the doctor and for the health system, mm -hmm. right? So um, I, we can send a parent a reminder to come and get their kids vaccination, vaccinated, right? Or um, the doctor can decide which, um, you know, which of the patients to follow up with, with you know, um, with particular health condition like insulin check or um, or their COVID booster shot, right? Mm -hmm. I can I can go in through my through my patients and figure out how many of them need a, a reminder to come there get their booster shot and then automate it at the end, and nobody has to call them. They just get an SMS on their phone. Mm. And obviously, it's important to recognize the risks as well. Are there any risks to uh, biomedical informatics? And, you know, this is compiling a huge amount of information uh, in a database. And also, there might be issues with regards to privacy in terms of uh, some people. So what do you think about the potential risks of, of this method? So privacy and security are issues that we contend with in technology generally, right? So health information technology is no different. However, there are standards for technology and security. Um, I think security um, can be sometimes easier to manage, right? You can have dual identification, you can have um, cybersecurity measures in place. Um, in terms of um, privacy, um, I've, I've seen this implemented um, in, in several hospitals in Armenia where there are like levels of access, right? on the healthcare system um, side and on the um, on the limiting access to healthcare professionals. So, so a doctor can only see their patients or the patients that are see, being seen in their clinic because maybe they're sharing patients. On the other hand, from the, from the patient perspective, it can get interesting, right? Because um, I've accessed my mom's record because she doesn't speak English in the United States, right? Um, on the other hand, you know, parents need access to their kids, right? So you need to have proxy access, access given to parents. Um, and then there are also cultural factors, right? So, 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 so Med's mama or, or, or Tatik may not be able to access the record. So, but, but, but those are like, you know, human level um, things that you can't fix. But there are privacy and security um, um, standards that you can implement and, and those are doable. But yes, there are some risks. But if you approach it with, with the risks and the uh, security measures in mind, then, you, then, then you, know, you, you can take measures to prevent those or, or mitigate them. And obviously, Armenia has a very vibrant IT sector and is coined by many as the Silicon Valley of the Caucasus. Do you think that that could be utilized, this vibrant economic sector, and apply it to digitizing and modernizing the healthcare system in Armenia? Oh, absolutely. It would just be a dream if Armenia could become the hub of training health informaticians in the next 10 years, not just for people to implement health electronic um, systems in Armenia, but outside of Armenia. And, you know, the world has moved to a very remote format, right? So I don't need to be in any place to be effective in health technology or any technology field, really. So um, Armenia can, in you know, in term position itself to be um, um, a hub for health informaticians, absolutely. So what would your vision be for Armenia's healthcare system if biomedical informatics and digitization could be utilized? Where would you like to see the healthcare system go in five, 10 years, for example? So in five, 10 years, I would love Armenia to move away from paper records, right? And I would love to see electronic health records implemented in, in the health system throughout Armenia, everything from polyclinics to emergency rooms to all hospitals, uh, whether private or public. Um, I would love to see um, um, Armenia tackle the crazy implementation that comes with electronic health records because it requires a lot of manpower and some capital and trained informaticians at all levels and uh, um, physician champions and um, health policy that actually helps reinforce the implementation of electronic health records. And with that, we will see um, great health outcomes. You can actually you know, uh, measure you know, health because you will, you will have data and information at your fingertips. 
but um, uh, you know, uh, the key would be to make sure that the system is interoperable, meaning that all the, all the different systems talk to each other. Right. So if I go from one hospital to another, right, I go from Yerevan to one of the Marses, right, like they can access my record and help patients. Mm -hmm. And you will be returning to the U.S. soon. Finally, I just want to ask you, we're here with the Avedis Health Informatics uh, Fellowship in conjunction with the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Can you describe a bit what your trip was like? What surprised you? What gave you hope, for example? Oh my God, I, I can I can talk for hours about that, but I will limit it to like <laughs> however long you want me to. But um, so so Avedis Health in um, Health Informatics uh, Training Fellowship is um, is the first health informatics training program in Armenia. Uh, the first cohort we are training four individuals, two clinicians, and two um, informatics technology doctorate level uh, folks. We have had great support uh, from from you know, NIH and MOH and, um, and the different partners and universities that, that we're partnering with. 50% of the, um, of the uh, faculty that are involved with the training are located in Armenia. So we already have existing, you know, um, interdisciplinary forces here. 50% um, are from, um, from the United States. Um, our trainees are impressive individuals. Of course, like I'm also slightly biased, but <laughs> they're, uh, you know, some of the projects they're thinking of are going to hopefully make great changes or be pilots to be actionable for later cohorts. But ultimately, um, what has excited me the most about this trip is, is to see the level of excitement about, about a field that, that's very nascent, but that people are, um, are excited about and supportive of. Okay, well, Dr. Lulejian, thank you very much for your time and we wish you and your team the best of luck. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on CivilNet.